Today, the three and a half million Albanians of the Republic of Albania are just the central piece of a mosaic of six million Albanians living in the Balkans. More than in any other country in the region, communities of different religious beliefs have lived in unique harmony in Albania. And Mother Teresa, having lived... Father Zef Plumi is one of only a handful of Catholic priests who survived the Hodja era. In all, he spent 26 years in prisons and labor camps, enduring repeated torture. Father Plumi was released in 1990, but true freedom came two years later, when the Democrats ousted the communists at the polls. Today, the rush is on to reclaim the faithful and to indoctrinate a whole generation of Albanians who grew up in a religious void. Before Hodges' rule, 70% of Albanians were Muslim. Today, they too are busy regrouping. Already, 300 mosques and 10 Islamic primary schools have been built and 1 million copies of the Quran printed. The primary target? Young people with no loyalty to any particular faith. The Muslim world is investing heavily in Albania, but any suggestion of fundamentalism is quickly denied by Albania's Islamic leader, Hafiz Sabri Kochi. He maintains there are excellent relations between the three established faiths. Men and Shibri Asi ka pas fundamentalism the Asi do tje. Vete mon tjuet fundamentalism politik. Until now, we built from the foundation 50 new churches. Orthodox Archbishop Anastasios Yanulatos ministers to Albania's ethnic Greek minority. He's worried the influx of missionaries may upset Albania's fine religious balance. The powerful Orthodox Church takes on the self-anointed role as keeper of the national identity in a country that, officially at least, is 98% Orthodox Christian. And another conflict, one in which the Church is at play. Epirus is a province of Greece bordering Albania. The frontier runs raggedly through these mountains, but many Greeks, especially those in the church, don't recognize it. They call southern Albania Northern Epirus. Sometimes the politicians are to blame because they raise that, uh, those feelings and then they cannot control them. For instance, we cannot say that Macedonia must be Greek because it was Greek 2,000 years ago. That's out of question. Father Apostolos' church is only a few meters from the Greek-Albanian border. He speaks openly of Greece liberating the Orthodox minority in Albania. And while the church increases its public profile over Albania, the Greek government is boosting its frontier military presence. 30 kilometers from the border, tanks and other armored vehicles in a church compound. It is not a threat from the part of Albania against Greece. They are afraid, they are suspicious, they suspect that they will want to overthrow the, the, the regime, to support the state, to expand our borders, which is not the truth. Greece is the only European Union nation that outlaws attempted conversions by any other church or religion. Will, many Muslims say they still endure a legacy of extraordinary discrimination that denies them passports or Greek national identity. Not a single mosque has been built in the city since Greece's independence from the Muslim Ottoman Turks 174 years ago. This is now the only capital in the European Union without an official mosque or Islamic cemetery. The bodies of Muslims who die here are shipped 800 kilometers to Thrace for burial or interred illegally in Athens. We have extremely stupid Greek nationalists within European Union, worse than in any other part of Balkans, not even letting Macedonia to use a name of the state. And it's part of European Union.